Ezekiel 24. Again, in the ninth year of Nebuchadnezzar, the tenth month and the tenth day of the month, when God wants you to know the date, he'll give you the date. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day. Even this same day, at the time that God speaking to Ezekiel, write this day down. Tenth month, tenth day, ninth year. The king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. So we got the dates. We've got the days that Jerusalem will be sacked. <laughs> but we're not given the date of the birth of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we are given the date of the death <laughs> and the burial and the resurrection. And that all this happened and ascended up to heaven before Pentecost. Look at that. We got those dates. You can go back and study your Bible and look up them dates. And utter a parable unto the rebellious house. This would be Jerusalem. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Set on a pot. Set it on. And also pour water into it. Okay, get yourself a big pot, put some water in it. Gather the pieces thereof into it. So we're going to make a stew. We're going to make a, a, a soup of water in a pot. Pieces. Even every good piece. Now remember, this is a parable and it's about Israel. It's about Judah. It's about Jerusalem. And God said, I'm going to liken you to a pot of stew. And I want you to, I want you to put the pieces in it and get every good piece. The thigh and the shoulder. And that shoulder, when you look in the law, when you were to give to the priest, the priest got the shoulder. And it is said to be the best part. When you brought your sacrifice, that shoulder belonged to the priest. The thigh. Fill it with the choice bones. Pick out the best for this stew. And God's liking this to Israel. You're the best. Of the nation of Israel, I put forth the good. And the choice. God says, I've chosen you, Israel. Not because you're great and wonderful, but because I've chosen you because of the faith of your father, Abraham. Take thee the choice of the flock. Meat. And burn also the bones under it. Make a hot fire. Boil the water. He says, make it boil well. Cook it well. Make sure it's where you get the expression. Well done. King James 1611 Bible. Look at that. And let them sieve, boil, simmer the bones that are of it. There are, I remember when my grandma, she, she was a dietary cook. And when she cooked it, I remember when she would make her stews and my mom would make her stews. And I knew the stews were coming because when they went, we, we actually had a butcher. When I grew up as a boy, we went to the butcher. And they would order bones. And the bones would have meat and, and, and it would have. And that would be put into the stew that would be put into the pot. And you just boil it out. And our dogs would be happy later. That's how you make a stew. You call it beef stock. Boil it well and let them see the bones therein. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, Jerusalem, to the pot whose scum is therein, 
who scum is not going out of it. Scum is that the icky, yucky, fatty, you scrape off the t You don't want that in your suit. And later on, you remove the bone. And you would scrape off that scum and you throw it out because you want the best. Now, it's quite interesting that when we look at the Bible, Ezekiel 24, 6, and we have the ASV, Woe to the bloody city, the cauldron, whose rust is therein. Now, I watched my mom and I watched my grandmother, dietary cook. Never did rust come up in that stew. <coughs> the only way you're going to get rust is you didn't clean the pot. Quite interesting. The modern Bibles don't know. The CEB. Corrosion. Uh, you don't know what the word corrosion is. That doesn't make it any... And then it's just rust. Rust. Residue. Residue is when you finish the stew and it's at bottom. <laughs> you want to scoop that out because you want the, all the stew because it was delicious. It ain't the scum. Yeah, we got corrosion. We got corrosion. Got some scum. Corroded. Rust, rust. That don't help you. Let's see. NIV. Now the pot is encrusted. Somebody left the stew too long cooking in the pot. I've done that. Uh, so, but it's remarkable too. Let's let's take a look at verse five. So verse 5, we read, where is it? Uh, make it boil well. Well done. That's a King James Bible word. So boil well, boil well, boil vi vigorously. Excuse me, I like to have a steak, but make sure you cook it vigorously. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, boy, oh well. Just get some of these other Bibles in here. Uh, NIV. Bring it to a boil and cook the bones in it. I like to have a steak. Cook it and put the bones in it. That do that don't help you. So, we have a thing here. If you would take Ezekiel 24, verse 5 and 6, if you would hand this passage to a chef, a butcher, because a butcher, back when I grew up, if you had any questions how to cook the meat, he was the man to tell you. And you bring them a modern Bible, they'd be scratching their head. Well, what are you talking about? That's why the Christians are so confused. So, woe to the bloody city, verse 6. To whose pot the scum is therein. Whose scum is not gone out of it. So, in other words, the, the inhabitants of Jerusalem has not removed the vile, the wicked, the criminals. They kept them. At the trial of Jesus, Pilate says, hey, you have a tradition. I will release unto you one. They kept the vile, the criminal. The one who made the insurrection, the one that, that murdered people, like happened to Capitol Hill when Donald Trump didn't get his way. And they turned Jesus Christ, the innocent, the God, the Messiah, the righteous one, over to be crucified. The law prescribed certain penalties, even the death penalty, for certain crimes. In Jerusalem, they weren't doing it. For 
for her blood murder is in the midst of her. She is set, she set it up upon the top of a rock. And what the thing is, the murders and the bloodshed that's going on in Jerusalem, the babies, the children, and outright murder, it's for all to see. It's done open. That when Jesus Christ was crucified, they were having picnics. And they said that the Roman crucifixion, that people would come. It was like a theater. So the sins of murder, the sins of bloodshed, is open. It's They're not trying to hide it. She's poured it out, not upon the ground, to cover it with dust. Now, take your Bibles to Leviticus. Now, this could have two implications of Scripture. Leviticus 17, 13. Scripture with Scripture. Now, I'm talking about a murder of human beings. But there could also be with the Scripture. Leviticus 17, 13. What sort of man there be of the children of Israel... Or of the stranger that subjourns among you. So can't just say Israel. And the Gentile. He's dwelling in the land. Which hunteth and catches any beast or fowl. That it may be eaten. He shall even pour out the blood therein. And cover it with dust. For it is the life of the, all flesh. The blood of it for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, ye shall, not, ye, she, ye shall eat the, the blood of no man or flesh, for the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Whosoever eat it shall be cut off. All right? Now the second implication we have here, not only the blood of men, it's a possibility with Scripture, with Scripture, they are eating flesh, they are cooking it on a rock, or lava rock, or charcoal, and they are eating it with the blood. They're not taking the blood and putting it in the ground like the law said. That it might cause fury to come upon, to come up, to take vent. Either case, one or the other, or both, it has angered God because murders against the, against the. The law, thou shalt not kill. The eating of blood, the other case, and or, is angered God because we just read in Leviticus 17, you're not to eat the blood. And that murder and that blood not only is under the law, but goes all the way back to Noah when he came out of that ark. And I'm not talking about the ark in the United States. I'm talking about the biblical art that's in Aaron. I have set her blood upon the top of the rock. It shall not be covered. It could be either case, murders, the children, or it could be that they've been eating blood. Steak tartare. And you can look up many recipes on the internet. Say, hey, give me a recipe where, where blood, and you'll find many. I know just one, steak tartare. I know exactly what it is, but I know it's, it's meat with blood. You say, well, what about if I get a steak or, or a pork from a restaurant or my own house, and, and, and a little bit of blood on the plate? You better bow your head and say, God, forgive me if this is a sin. Because we're under grace. But do you realize when Paul came back to the council of Jerusalem and James and Peter, all of them met, and they said that the one thing is we're distinct from fornication and things strangled in blood. 
That holds true of the eating of blood to Christians, and that makes the mass of the Catholics and the Lutherans to say it is the literal blood. Okay, you just put yourself under a curse. So don't give me Mary Christ math. That's an abomination before the law, during the law, and under grace in the church age, and the tribulation period, and the millennium. What's wrong with Christmas? Just look up the definition. Therefore, and, and the thing too, with all nations, if God's done it to his people, Jerusalem, what do you think God's going to do for all the nations? What do you think Adolf Hitler is going to have to stand to one day, whatever judgment he ends up, saved or lost? I don't know. And if it ain't under the blood of Jesus Christ, how much blood will be revealed at the judgment of all the Jewish, of all the Polish, of all the English, and all the Americans? That one man shed. And Adolf Hitler never shot a weapon, never swung a sword. And how many people's deaths? And record in history will tell us, and I don't know, but he committed suicide. That's what they said. Friend, that's not scripture. There are people in our United States correctional facilities, jails, they are on death row for murder, and they're going to die by natural courses or by heart attacks or by strokes, but they're not going to be dying by hanging, by shooting, by electricity, or by lethal injection. That violates the scriptures as a Christian nation under God. If God's going to do it to Jerusalem, he guarantee he'll do it to the other nations. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the bloody city. Imagine the, the, the cities in America where there's been bloodshed by guns, by violence, by knife, by gangs, by rape. In the high schools. I will even make the pile for great, for fire great. So, we're back to the stew again. And he's like, with your sins, Jerusalem, you're not in the pot no more. You're in the fire. And what's the expression? Out of the, fire, out of the pot and into the fire. God's going to dump out that stew right into the fire. Keep on wood. And the Babylonian armies and armies back then would carry trees and carry wood to use the, the, the tackle the walls. What's that king? That, that he went to two towers and they brought the trees. They put the, the trees up against the tower and they smoked the people out. You gotta read your Bible. Kindle the fire. You see, I, I don't remember. I didn't look it up, but run to the Scripture and look up tower and smoke and fire. I think Abimelech. I think. And you run that cross references right here. Oh, okay. Then run to Nehemiah when he tells us what the city walls look like in his time. Consume the flesh. I mean, people are going to burn. They're going to die. Lamentation. <laughs> Look at this expression. Spice it well. That's an odd statement for God to put in there. My people are going to die. They're, they're, they, they deserve their sin. They deserve the just. Throw some spice in there. Put some salt. We are, we are the salt of the earth. <laughs> You want to be the salt there? How do you know it's salt? Did you read in the law that God said, when it comes to salt and the sacrifice, you put a lot of salt on it. Just don't put no honey. Don't burn no honey upon my altar. But man, you put the salt. And let the bones be burned. That's even happening. That's even happening to the land. 
then set it empty upon the coals thereof. You know what happens when you take a pan and you put it on a fire and there's nothing in that pan? If you leave it long enough, you don't have a kitchen no more. You don't have a pan. Well, you know, we got cast iron. That the brass of it may be hot. Brass. It's going to take a lot for that for brass to get hot. And may burn. That's hot. We're not talking about the, the cheap pots and pans. We're talking about some brass. And that the filthiness of it may of it may be molten in it. So in other words, just burn them up and burn up their sins with them. That's God saying about his people. That the scum of it may be consumed. I'm going to wipe it all out. I'm going to burn it all out. I'm going to destroy it all out. I'm going to kill it all out. So may their sins burn with them. And maybe I can finally get something clean. When you... I remember growing up as a boy, I'd get a sliver in my finger. My mom would take a needle and she'd put it in a flame. And what you're doing is you're sterilizing that needle so it don't cause an infection. Fire sterilizes. God's, I'm going to, the only way I could sterilize Jerusalem in their sin, I got to bring fire. A lot of times, if you go into the hospital, you'll see, you know, when they give you a needle or somebody a needle, they'll put it in that bin, they lock it up. Those needles are supposed to be put into an incinerator and burn. So when they do dispose of it, it's been cleansed by the fire. They say the sun, and I believe it, and probably as much as maybe mercury, there is no diseases, there is no infection. Why? Because it's hot. You couldn't even get the disease close enough to the sun to get it in the sun because the heat of the sun would... I find it kind of ironic because I went to the hospital last time and I was shivering and cold. And I, I, I said, why is this hospital? Every time I come here, it is shivering. It is freezing. Said, we're, we're, we're fighting germs. And, and I said, how are you doing that? So, you know, well, germs don't like heat. I mean, wait, no. She said, germs don't like cold. They love the heat. And I said, ma'am, Nurse, yeah, my mom used to take a needle and put it in the flame, and she didn't put it in the icebox. Now, she may have put a little ice on my finger before she did it, heat that needle, you know, for a little, you know, to numb it. In thy filthiness is lewdness. I mean, verse 12. She has wearied herself with lies. There's your good Baptist church today. There's your perverted Bibles. There's your politics. There's your careers. Her great scum. <laughs> wow, how did it get so great? Went not forth out of her. That's how I got great scum. They didn't get rid of it. They kept it. They they promoted it. You know, we had a point in time that, you know, women would go into the back lobbies, back hot rooms of places to have an abortion done illegally. And, you know, it was unsanitary. And they, but now we legalized it. How many abortions are now have happened? Because we legalized it. And it came to, well, before legalization, a woman would think, you know, 
if I go ahead, I may die myself. Uh, now it's like, just go, you know, they get the gloves, they, they sanitize. So now we have a great scum of America, uh, abortion. Her scum shall be in the fire. Where would you put that today? The lake of fire that burns forever when they die in their sins. You go into the lake of fire because you refuse to have God pay for your sin. You rather pay for your own sin. In thy filthiness is lewdness. Because I have purged thee. Alright? And thou was not purged. I suffered and died upon the cross for you, but you don't want to believe. Okay, you take your own sins off. Look at that. That's in the Old Testament. That is pointing to Calvary and the finished work of the Messiah. Hey, I've done all the finished work. Well, you know, today we're going to keep the Passover. But they can't keep the Passover by the law because you can't go to Jerusalem. You can't go to the, to the temple. And I've seen the layout today of the Passover meal, and there's a piece of lamb broken on a plate, which supposedly where the Messiah is. The Bible says not a bone of him should be broken. Every girl today is waiting for her to be born of the Messiah. It's already happened through Mary. And then you're going to come up with that shit. Mary, did you know? Of course she know. Gabriel told her. Duh! Duh, 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 duh. There are people going to go in the lake of fire and God paid for their sins, but they don't want to have anything to do with it. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore. God had Jeremiah say, repent, repent, get right, repent, get right, repent, get right. Go with off to Babylon. And they just rejected Jeremiah. They rejected uh, Ezekiel. Okay, fine, that's it, you're done. Did we not read in Jeremiah that Jeremiah, God got to the place that Jeremiah, don't you dare pray for them no more. You know, I've got many people on my prayer list. And I don't know if they're alive anymore. I don't know where they are. But, you know, there are some people on my prayer list that God says, wipe them out. I don't want you to pray for them no more. Like, ooh, wait, boy, did you get in trouble? And there are people done me great wrong, and I still pray for them. And there'll be times when, oh, I, Lord, I don't want to pray for them. <laughs> pray for them. But, Lord, I, Pray for them. And there have been people in my life, God said, I, I'm not, no, shut up. I don't want to hear about it. This goes with Jeremiah. Till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. And, that, and that begin, that's beginning to work when Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and the ghost start showing up. I, the Lord, have spoken. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. Did God say one day, at, at, the, at the call of the trump, the dead in Christ shall rise, those that are alive and remain shall come? Did, did God say that? It's going to happen. He will do it. Did God not say there's a time of Jacob's trouble, seven years, three and a half years, tribulation? Three and a half great years of tribulation. There's a there's a person coming up with the Antichrist, the false prophet. Moses and Elijah are going to show up. 144,000 are not Jehovah Witnesses on this earth right now today. They're going to come up. They're going to preach to the nation of Israel, not Gentiles. At the end of all the plagues, there's going to be no sun, no moon, no stars. Then that light at the end of the tunnel is going to be a man on a horse. Coming back with many crowds, a name above all names, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, with his church followed behind him. And he's got the blood of the nations, not the blood of his own Calvary's cross. I had to throw that one in there. So 
So when you say God has spoken it, it shall come to pass. It, the Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine. You better not go run to Matthew and say, this is church age doctrine. Because most of that in, in Matthew is tribulation, not church age. And according to thy doings, you get what you deserve. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. The Bible speaks of different degrees in hell. They shall judge thee. Who's the day? Babylon, Chaldeans, saith the Lord God. 